Hello booktube, I'm Sean the Book Miniac. welcome back to my channel. Here I am with a short little video introducing some Saskatchewan novelists and short story writers that I have read over the years. This is by no means a complete list. I'm not widely read in the literature of my home province, Saskatchewan in Canada. But the other day, Peg of Reading and Knitting on the Porch, I believe is the latest name of her channel, formerly Peg the Book Prize Addict, asked me for recommendations on Saskatchewan writers because she's coming to my wedding in Saskatchewan in about two and a half weeks or something. So I thought I could reply to Peg privately, but why don't I make a very quick video? But like I say, I haven't, I'm not widely read in Saskatchewan literature, and I'm just going to tell you about a few of the ones I've read over the years. And uh, maybe some of you will have recommendations for me in the comment sections below. I remember how pleasantly shocked I was that Russell of Ink and Paper Blog recommended on one of his videos a novel from Alberta, the adjoining province, that I had never heard of. So, stranger things have happened. But here are a few that I have read and enjoyed. The, the one that I'm most excited about is Sinclair Ross. He was born in 1908 and died in 1996. And he is most famous for his, I believe, Governor General Prize winning novel, As For Me and My House published in 1941 and it is an epistolary novel and f centers on a minister's wife in small town Saskatchewan and it's a tale of adult adultery in the small town Prairie Mance and it's wonderful I haven't read it for years I would love to reread it also uh, maybe of everything I've read by Sinclair Ross perhaps my favorite is a collection of his short stories called The Lamp at Noon and other stories. I believe it was originally published in 1968. I'm not sure about that, but it was an, it was when I studied that text in university in a Saskatchewan literature course that I, as I was just newly out of the closet, that I realized how homoerotic his stories and writing were. I don't know if there was any... Well, Thomas of the Reader's Podcast said he thought that as for me and my house had some pretty homoerotic stuff going on, but I was way too young when I read read that. But there's some wonderfully nothing or nothing sexual, but really uh, just a sensuality, a homosensuality to many of the stories and the representations of men in those stories. And there's one story also about adultery called The Painted Door that has the best, most shocking ending of any short story I have ever read. So, Peg and anyone else, you must track that one down, if nothing else. Also, probably the most famous novel out of Saskatchewan is Who Has Seen the Wind, published in 1947 by W.O. Mitchell. Well, maybe he and Sinclair Ross are both our most famous novelists. This is also set in a small town and centers on this sensitive young male protagonist's uh, experiences of death and life as experienced by nature and the wind on the prairies. It's all very beautiful. And I don't remember it very well. I read it, but I also saw the movie. The movie was 1970s, and the French teacher from my small town in Saskatchewan, who was a semi-professional actor on the side, played one of the roles in the movie. So that's all I really remember it. But that's not true. I don't remember the scene in the novel as much as I remember the scene in the movie that was based on the novel about the Chinese family. Maybe they were the, the Chinese laundry family or the Chinese cafe family. And the one girl, and I don't know if I can even tell you this without my voice cracking, the only non-white people in the whole town and she had a birthday party. And she invited all her classmates, and nobody came except the teacher. And that scene in that movie, that was my first experience of anything to do with racism, maybe in my life, and it still <laughs> gets to me. But I don't know how I'd feel about the novel as a whole all these years later, but it is a famous Saskatchewan novel. Another one, a little bit less famous, nobody really talks about it anymore, but I read it as a teenager. It's not a children's novel at all. It was Why Shoot the Teacher? 
from 1965, and it's kind of a humorous novel uh, by Max Braithwaite, and he was born in 1911 and died in 1995, but uh, most people don't remember him very well, but I enjoyed it, and it was about a Eastern Canadian guy, and you know, there's regional rivalries and misunderstandings and stereotypes in Canada, just like any other country, and so the East is the older part of the country and more refined and more snobbish. So this Eastern, maybe Ontario, I don't know, a teacher comes out West to teach in a rinky-dink little small town in Saskatchewan, and it's about his adventures. And I remember some pretty sexual stuff happening. It was published in 1965 that I read when I was 11 or 12. But anyway, the only other book that I myself have read that I would recommend to you is a book of short stories published in 1988 called Women of Influence by Bonnie Bernard. Bonnie Bernard grew up and lived most of her life in eastern Canada, Ontario, I believe, but she did live in Regina, Saskatchewan. Regina is the capital city of Saskatchewan for 10 or so years because of her husband's job, and she wrote about Saskatchewan, and these stories mostly are about Saskatchewan people. And I read it with an old boyfriend around that time, maybe 1990s, early 1990s. We read the book back and forth to each other on long drives, or we, did, we read fiction a lot to each other. It was very sweet. And I remember there's one story in here about a couple with a gay son involving planting a tree and then pulling the tree out of the ground. And it's maybe now I would say, I would think it, I would judge it to be a little bit heavy-handed in the symbolism, but maybe, I hope not, but at that time it really affected me as a really, one of the most powerful works of fiction I had ever read. And it's in that book. I don't remember the title of the story. I don't have the book here, but uh, anyway. There, so the other writers I'll just mention briefly. One of my mum's favorite writers is Sharon Butala, a Saskatchewan writer, and she writes both novels and memoir about living life on the prairie. I will put a list of her books in the show notes. I have never read anything by her, but my mom loves her. And my mom also really likes a Saskatchewan mystery novelist, Gail Bowen, and she writes Saskatchewan murder mysteries. And she's very active today, as is Sharon Butala. And so I'll just put her name. You can check out, you can search elsewhere for a list of her books. Within the context of the Canadian literary scene or Canadian literary circles, the only writer who's still active today that's kind of well-known nationwide because he's won the Governor General's Award twice, I believe, is Guy Vanderhaeg. I don't believe he lives in Saskatchewan anymore, but he is Saskatchewan born. And I didn't actually look it up, but I read one book of his short stories that were very gothic, and I'm not really a big gothic fan, but he's written other books that are set in Saskatchewan. The Englishman's Boy was one of the ones that won the Governor General's Award, but I haven't only ever read that one collection, so I can't recommend him that highly, but he is well known in Canada. Maria Campbell is uh, most famous for her memoir, Halfbreed, and she is Métis, I believe, certainly an uh, Indigenous writer. I have met her, but I have never read any of her stuff. I have talked before on different videos about Wallace Stegner, because Wallace Stegner, of course, was an American novelist, but he did spend part of his childhood in Saskatchewan from 1914 to 1920. His parents homesteaded in East End, Saskatchewan. And East End, Saskatchewan is where my grandmother, my mum's mum, was born in 1918. So my grandparents my great-grandparents homesteaded in, in the same town at the exact same time, and they must have known each other. And Wallace Stegner wrote, I believe it's a, it's a blend of fiction and non-fiction and history. His book, so is it a novel? I don't know, Wolf Willow. And I've never read it, but I should. So that, and I talked about it before. So Peg said, other than the Wolf Willow, what Saskatchewan writers can you recommend? So here I have done my best. And just to conclude, any Henry James scholars in the house? Certainly not me, but if you have done any academic work on Henry James whatsoever, you will be familiar with the name Leon Edel. He was his biographer, and I think there was about 822 volumes in his multi-volume biography of Henry James. 
Leon Adele was, he wasn't born in Saskatchewan, but he did grow up in Saskatchewan. And I just found out today, preparing for this video, that the fantasy writer, I've never read him, I'm not a big fantasy reader, but Guy Gavriel K, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, was born in Saskatchewan. So there you go. That's all I got. If you got more, put what you got in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Thank you.